holy smoke, the drama of the action last night. Game two, Warriors Grizzlies in the early, and I'm talking about early going. Tim Legler, we're less than three minutes into the game. Draymond Green throws it. Gary Payton catches it. Dylan Brooks does the rest. We got trouble. And Memphis pitching a shutout to that point. Dylan Brooks trying to keep that going. Gets there late, and he's just you can just see the contact at the head. And when you take a blind hit when you're up in the air like that, inability to land the right way, and unfortunately, catastrophic result for Gary Payton. Yeah, second. Brooks is ejected. Payton's got a fractured elbow. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Then down goes Draymond Green on an inadvertent elbow, elbow from Xavier Tillman. He's on the ground bleeding. He's got to go back and he's, look at him with the fans now. So we got that going on. Steve Kerr, how about the physical no, play? That physical, that was dirty. Not physical, dirty. Well, one man's physical is another man's dirty. Fourth quarter, J.J. Redick, four and a half minutes to play. Warriors leading by one. Jordan Poole to Steph Curry. The Warriors have a four-point lead, so the season is on the line, and John Moran took over. Took over, fearlessness all night. Found a way on all these possessions to get back to his left hand. He's inside. He's outside. He scored 18 points in a fourth quarter that, again, had the season on the line. Timmy Legg, Steph Curry was not backing down. No, great job here. Turns the corner, gets there. Pat did floater for Steph Curry. Overall, Steph Curry had a typical night, but it wasn't enough because of this guy. Oh, oh, oh look at the move. Legler did a great breakdown of that one a little earlier. Jordan Poole winds up looking in the wrong direction. Which way did he go? Morant would score 47. Now, that one gave the Grizzlies a one-point lead and then JJ another tough one again getting to his left in the paint elevating there's just not enough size and length for the Warriors to stop him. and then the Warriors are down by three and wait a minute they call clay for the travel you don't call walking in the NBA I will, I will say this to Clay Clay's defense there were 13 travels that were worse than that game that were not called uh, but they call that one and John Morant is saying hey we're going to have some fun and he is making it fun we're all even at one game apiece in this series did I mention Morant had 47 he's 22 years old that's his second career 45 point playoff performance look at the company that he is keeping it's LeBron it's Kobe it's Ja it's the one name club and he officially belongs in it so before we get to any of the controversy again JB Bickerstaff I, I don't have adjectives like how would you describe what we are seeing in this postseason from John Morant uh, it's the escalation of a superstar it's that simple you know the regular season is one thing the fourth quarter is another but superstars are made in the playoffs and He's continuously shown us what he's capable of. He puts that team on his back. It wasn't a particularly pretty game last night, but it was the fourth quarter, time to get the job done, and he went out and did it. You know, J.J., I mean, I'm older than you, and, and, and so I appreciate the, the throwback mentality. Like not all, he's got a, a, a modern-day game. He does all the things he's supposed to do in the game today, but he's got, to me, like he's got the head of someone who played generations ago. He's got that kind of toughness, confidence. He's challenging constantly, going forward constantly. I... What can I tell you? I love him. He has a swagger and a fearlessness that is reflected in the rest of the team. He is the leader of that team, you know, along with Dylan Brooks, who has that same swagger and confidence. But Ja very much has the mentality. I'm going to line you up. You can't stop me one-on-one. -on -one. When I get to that help defense, I'm just going to elevate and score right over you. He actually has, I think, a similar mentality to Giannis in that. He does. He will not be denied. He wants to be not just a guy that's a good player, an all-star, or a guy even that wins one time or wins an MVP. He wants to be an all-time great, and that's what he did. You think about what we just showed in those highlights, I and mean, I think he had five of the last six field goals. If he misses any of those shots, they probably lose. That's how important each of those possessions was at the time. Because Golden State is one three away from ending it if John Moran is not doing what he's doing. And think about it. This is season on the line. Face to face with Steph Curry. I mean, the, the preeminent player at his position of the generation and just not backing down an inch. So, Morant, awesome. Series tied at one apiece. Now let's get to the controversy. You saw the, the play there, Dylan Brooks on Gary Payton the second, and there were other stuff like that. Here was a little more from Steve Kerr after the game. I don't know if it was intentional, but it, it, it was dirty. And, um, <clears throat> you know, playoff basketball is going to, it's supposed to be physical, but there's a code in this league there's a code that players follow um, where you, you never put a guy's season slash career in jeopardy by taking somebody out in midair and clubbing him across the head and ultimately fracturing Gary's elbow he broke the code Dylan Brooks broke the code
All right, again, I'm sitting with three people who would know the code, particularly JB. I mean, you grew up in the game. Uh, would that, was that one beyond? Like, we, we've seen flagrants, flagrant twos. Did that one go a step beyond? Uh, again, I think it was justly called a flagrant two. Uh, you know, I coached Dylan Brooks for two years in Memphis. You know, I know he was not intending to injure, mm -hmm. uh, but he put himself in a compromising position, especially when you hit a guy from behind. A guy's in the air, you hit him in the head. You know, his momentum's going to take him to the ground. And then, unfortunately, we saw how it ended. It, it's a significant play. How about that? The, Steve Kerr is he's taking this up a notch. It broke the code. That feels yeah, like yeah. a big thing to say. What do you think? Well, coach knows this. Legs knows this. When you get to the playoffs, teams talk about a no layup rule. And if you see Dylan Brooks, his body position is sort of he finishes that swipe and lands like there was a sense of desperation to adhere to that no layup rule code. And, and to coach's point, like I'm not saying Dylan Brooks is a dirty player, but this was a dirty play for someone who had limited athleticism and could barely run a 40. Apparently, um, you know, I, I actually broke my wrist four times on a similar play three times in high school and once in the NBA. Once you get that momentum, and this was a little different than the Draymond Green pet play where he's going vertical. One, on a fast break, once you get that momentum, you're, you're in a very vulnerable position. And so we've got that factor here. Now let's talk about the outcome. Now Gary Payton Jr. is going to be out. For, we haven't gotten the full diagnosis yet, but a fractured elbow certainly doesn't sound like he's coming back anytime soon. So the Warriors are going to have to go it without him. He's an important piece of that puzzle. What does it mean for the series? He's most equipped to keep him in front. He's most equipped to challenge him, actually, at the end him of the plays. Him being Morant, to be but clear. Correct. And when no. Ja gets to that place where he's going to hit that trampoline and go up, Gary Payton is most equipped also to go up and at least challenge him better than what Golden State is putting in front of him now. So this is a this is a major factor. You know, I was talking to some Warriors fans last night, and they're all sky is falling now because of Gary Payton. I understand how important he is. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.